Hi friends, and welcome to my channel. I'm Gio, and this is called Gobsmacked. Gandalf, email me tonight's logs and list of equipment failures. Time to close up shop and get drunk. Initiate shutdown, I said, taking a sip of my Chardonnay. Theodore, I'm shutting down all systems, and the emails are uploaded to your personal account. How more may I serve you? Gandalf said, in his slightly mechanical voice. The wall screens flickered to blue, then the ceiling screen, and finally the floor screen. No matter what I did, the floor always took a second longer. The six screens turned white and shut down. All of them. Work had gone completely wrong tonight. The updated drone software was supposed to eliminate the equipment lag I experienced when four or more drones were active. If tonight had been an emergency, somebody could have been seriously hurt, or even killed. My home office is a little different from everybody else's, except for the sensor chair. The room is empty. The walls are perfect. I had coated them with a spray sheen that made them similar to a gigantic movie screen. I used customized displays projected on all four walls and on the ceiling and floor. I'm Theodore Athens, and I'm 25, and I never finished college. Part of the reason was because I knew more than the professors. They still think that desktops are cutting edge and laptops are toys. What about those of us who use holographic smart rooms cued to audio and visual commands with an AI interface? They never taught that in college. Who types anymore? Speak, and it is done. With a simple gesture, I have made millions. It's fun having your stock displays floating about your head. I took off the customized gloves, each lined with two dozen sensors, so the room could read every nuance and every gesture. I'm the owner, developer, inventor, and lead shareholder of One.com. My company, my baby, my life. My second year in college, was I 17 at the time? I figured out a better drone and a better control system. They called it toys. Until I used the system to find a missing person. At night, lost in the northern parts of the Mojave, using an infrared location system, and then launched flares to lead rescuers to her. Then I showed off a little. I emailed the police her GPS, sent live pictures to the news crews, and dropped a cell phone tour. All from my parents' garage, here in Vegas. I didn't even have to get dressed. How many prototypes ago was that? Mom and Dad moved back to Oakland, California right after I graduated. Mom and Dad missed the ocean. I used to live there until I turned 10, and Dad's accounting firm transferred him to Vegas. The ocean is in my blood and I plan on going back to the beautiful city by the bay. Besides, all my relatives live in the Bay Area. I own a condo in Vegas with a master bedroom and office for my boyfriend, Yad. The smart room for me, a living room, a kitchen, several closets, a bathroom with a rainfall shower, and a very nice deck. My current project, helping first responders work safely. Smaller drones that can enter places where firefighters can't get to. My drones aren't the little toys people buy online and play with on their birthdays. No, mine are computer-controlled aerial platforms designed for specific uses. Like land search and rescue, or water search and rescue, or surveillance, or emergency medical supply delivery. And the list is growing. Me and my wine snuggled into the couch. I can't wait for Yad to get home. Our normally neat and tidy place was a dump. A row of filled trash bags by the door, piles of old electronics, stacks of papers, half-filled boxes of manuals, a chair I had accidentally broken standing on it while rescuing Frodo, our black, Persian, very shy kitty. The mess couldn't be helped. We'd have it cleaned up in three days because we had to. Frodo jumped into my lap and mewed. Frodo was only six months old, and his eyes have a permanently angry look about them. He's also the softest thing, and once he trusts you, the most loving. How's my grumpy kitty, I said, massaging his back until he purred. Frodo has very sharp claws, as evidenced by all the scratches on my hands, and his scratching post, 
and the side of the couch, and mine and Yad's front bedpost, and the bathroom door. Frodo doesn't like to be left out, but I love him. Frodo only likes one kind of cat food. That's why he's trying to get my attention. It's feed me time. Sometimes I think Frodo only keeps me around so I can feed him and change the litter box. Checking the time, I put chicken and salmon and a couple of other things in a blender and blend it away. The mixture stinks like only fish can, but it's Frodo's favorite. Frodo jumped on the counter, looking at me as if to say, Hurry up, Dad. Don't rush me, I said to my kitty. Does anybody else talk to their cat? Wild erotic music simmered through the hidden speakers in my condo. The song was Hot Love by Sterling Locke. That made me smile because my boyfriend's picture appeared on my phone. Gandalf, answer the phone, speaker mode. Hello, sexy. How was work? I could tell that Yad must have been smiling. I'm just leaving now. If you can't believe it, they threw me a surprise party, and they've invited you and me out for drinks later. The bar and grill on 7th. About 8 o'clock? That all right? Good. Except for Frodo's food, our fridge is empty, I said. Yad started his car and asked, That's because we're not buying anything. Did the paperwork go through? This afternoon, we have 90 days from today, I said, pausing to grin. Good. I can't wait. Now the bad news. Don't yell. Did Mom get there yet? He asked. I took another sip of wine and said, What are you talking about? He blew a breath out before he said, Mom texted while I was underneath the platforms working on the server connections. It's the kind of job you like, because I'm all dirty. Yad always knew how to make me relax. I dropped my voice to something deep and sexy and in almost a whisper, I said, it sounds like I'll have to throw a dirty boy like you in the shower. Need someone to scrub your back? I'll make sure to clean you up, from top to bottom. Yad yeah, chuckled. I thought you'd never ask. Anyway, you know my boss's rule. Cell phone's not allowed unless on break. So I left it in my car. I didn't get Mom's messages until just now. She must have sent two dozen messages, and I haven't counted how many times she texted. And? I asked. Mom's invited herself to dinner, Yad said. Unless she likes cat food, we don't have anything, I said. Ding dong. Damn. The noise startled Frodo. He didn't like the sound and ran into the kitchen and somehow was on top of the fridge. Shy kitties move faster than regular cats. A perfect wreck of a day just got worse. I was suddenly depressed. Adele Trusick is at the door, Gandalf said. Practice patience. Who knows why Mom does what she does? Did you get the reservations for the hotel and talk to Marge? Yad said. Ding dong, ding dong. Oh my God, Yad said. I'm sorry about this. I took a sip of wine and said, Relax, the hotel is arranged with a view of the San Francisco Bay, plus complimentary wine. The room service is so good we never have to get dressed. Plus, I emailed Marge with pricing updates, and she has some options in South San Francisco. I'll give you the details later, because your mother has just arrived. Our place isn't ready for company, so you know what she'll say. We were too ambitious last night. We should have tossed more, I said. Yeah, I'd groaned. Good thing I've bought a ton of boxes. Can you believe I've got three bags of old clothes I want to donate, and I still don't know what to do with the rest? You? Bedding and towels and old computer parts. How did we get so much? I said. Blame our jobs? At least we won't be bored for the next few days, he said. Can we get all of it done by Friday? Christoph and Stefan and their families will be here, I said. Nothing like a deadline. Did you get the drone problem solved? Yad said. No, another thing that will have to wait, I said. Ding dong. Adele Trusick is most insistent, Gandalf said. Why can't mom be like other moms and let their kids grow up? Did I say I was sorry? Yad said. It must have been me because I heard the cringe in his voice. I chuckled. You owe me for running interference. Gandalf, display who is at the door. Maybe it's not her? 
The flat screen showed Yad's mom, Adele, at the door. Groan. Ding dong, 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 ding dong. That woman is going to break our doorbell, Yad said. You know your mom's going to complain about everything. Hurry home and save me, and I'll let you do anything you want once we're in the city, I pleaded. Imagine the things I could do with marshmallow cream. I can't wait for San Francisco, Yad said. I'll buy you jars of it. Just get home, I said. We ended the call with a chuckle. I walked to the door, stealing myself. Would it be too late to have another glass of wine? Upon opening the door, the Tasmanian devil that was Adele Trusick pushed past me and into my house. Dinner better be ready. I'm starving, she said. Nice to see you too, Adele, I said. Adele took one look at our messy place and swore, Where is my son? Look at this place. It's a pigsty. How dare you make my son live in this mess? Clean it up right now. I bet you don't even have dinner done. Actually, no. I just got off work, I said. How can a lazy, no-good bum like you complain about working? You never leave the apartment. You don't deserve my son, she said. I walked back to the kitchen and restarted the blender. I'll be with you in just a minute. Your place smells like old fish. Don't you ever do laundry. If this was a normal relationship, my son would be the priority. Now I have to clean up after you. You're useless, she said. She went to the coffee table and picked up some of my spreadsheets and some printed code I'd been working on. I ran over and grabbed the papers. Please don't touch anything. I need these for my work. Like you work, you're nothing but a lazy, incompetent slob, Adele said. Get this place cleaned up and start making dinner for me and my son. Just have a seat. Yad is on his way. Would you like some wine? I said. Adele scowled and said, What does Yad see in you? Why don't you relax for a minute while I feed Frodo? I said. I walked back into the kitchen, turned the blender off, and filled Frodo's food dish and set it on the floor. Frodo refused to come off the fridge. My pretty black kitty was afraid of Yad's mom. She sniffed the air. What is that stench? I'm making cat food, I said. You make food for your cat, but not for my son? And not for me? You're useless, she said. The key sounded in the lock. Yaduvir has arrived home, Gandalf said. Adele jumped. I will never get used to this house. Tell it to shut up. I went to the door and opened it for Yad. I smiled and kissed him. He was smudged with dirt all over. How was work? I asked. I'm tired as hell in the places I've crawled. I don't want to remember, Yad said, and kissed me back. Then he tossed his keys and walled it alongside mine in a designer holder on the wall. There's my darling baby boy, Adele said, becoming all smiles. I'm twenty-four, so knock it off, Mom, Yad said. Why are you here? Adele folded her arms pouting and said, Can't a mother come see her son? I was lonely and had a great idea. I will move in with you. It's obvious your boyfriend can't handle cleaning, so I will take care of everything for you. Cooking, cleaning, laundry. But I won't do anything for him. Under my breath I muttered, at snooping to the list, Mom, you moving in is not a good idea. There is something you need to know, Yad said. Adele gave a look of horror and yelled, Don't you want your loving mother to live with you? Don't you love me any more? Mom, of course I love you, Yad said. Adele gave me a sweet, terrifying smile and said, Then it's settled. I'm moving in. Hell no, I said. Yad, I'm not living with your mother. We are adults and live on our own. Our parents have their own lives. She can visit once a month, but that's it. Adele gave me an odd smile and said, Since my husband died, I'm lonely. I miss my son. So it's decided. I'm moving in. And I don't care what you say. No, Mom. We don't have room. I need to tell you something, Yad said. Yaduvir Trusik, what has Theodore done to you? He's brainwashed you. You used to love me. We used to be so close. Does he treat you as well as I did? No, he doesn't. Look at this place. 
Think about how much fun we'll have together, you and me, just like old times. Besides, I'm getting older, and I haven't ever had a job, and somebody is going to have to take care of me like your father did. Since you're my favorite child, it's up to you. Both Yad and I rolled our eyes, and Yad said, You're only 52, Mom. Plenty of places will hire you. Now would you be quiet so I can tell you something? Don't be rude to the woman that raised you. Besides, you have the room, Adele yelled. I looked at her and said, No, Adele, you're never moving in. Yad, I need something to eat to tide me over. Italian, all right, your usual? Yad nodded. Gandalf, order our usual. I'll call Fast Fast Dining for delivery. Adele sat up, saying, You forgot me. That's rude. Gandalf, Pick me up a chicken souvlaki combo platter from that new Greek cafe. I don't remember the name, but it's on Armstrong, not far from the Lutheran church. I'm sorry, you do not have authorization, Gandalf said. Even your house is rude. That will change when I move in, Adele yelled. Attention, Theodore. Including the nighttime traffic congestion, wait times are two hours, Gandalf said. Mom folded her arms and grinned. Go pick it up, Theodore, you lazy and considerate bum. You should have food ready before I arrived, so don't complain because you have to pick it up yourself. I have never met somebody so rude. This will give me time with my darling son. At least he knows his manners. Yad took a breath and said, Mom, don't talk to my boyfriend like that. I'll talk to him however I want. Besides, when I move in, I demand he move out. Now, chop chop, move on, I'm hungry. Adele said. You're not moving in. Yad, I'll get the food, I said. You are the rudest person I have ever met. Get me a chicken souvlaki, now, Adele said. How did tonight go wrong? One bright side, at least Frodo was fed, or would be when he stopped hiding on top of the fridge. Maybe I could crawl up there with him. I remained silent and emotionless and walked out. Yaduvir if only Mom knew who she was talking to. Theodore is a self-made millionaire and he's only 25. As soon as my boyfriend had left, Mom became sweet smiles. Darling, I'm serious. I need to move in with you. Enough of that, Mom. I need to tell you something, I said. After you say that I can move in with you, she said. I was starting to get a little bit angry. So I said, What about your old house, Mom? Mom turned on the charm and said, It's too expensive. I've never worked in my life. My job was attending to my husband, raising you and your brothers, and keeping the house clean. I can't do anything else. The bills ate up what's left of your father's inheritance four months ago. The bill collectors called daily. I'm out of money. I can't pay the mortgage. What are my options? My loving children need to take care of me or I'm homeless. You wouldn't do that to your mother. I gave birth to you. I raised you. So you see, you have to take care of me. What about my brothers? I said. Mom gave me a patient smile and said, Your brothers have wives and children to take care of. Your oldest brother, Kristoff, is expecting his second child. And his wife said they cannot afford to feed me. She leads him around by the nose. I hate her. Stefan's wife said she will not be my servant and said if I moved in, she'd divorce Stefan and make sure she got full custody of their boy. Can you believe it? My son chose his wife over me. That left you. You're gay, don't have a family, but you do have a well-paying job. I'm moving in. Besides, you have an empty room. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. So I tried to be patient and said, Mom, that's Theodore's office. It's off limits. I've told you that he works remote. And in one breath, Mom said, Don't cover for him. Why do you stay with somebody so rude? Don't you know the lazy jerk is lying? He doesn't do anything. I bet you're paying for this entire place. So now you have the obligation to take care of me. Besides, my needs beat his empty office. Now be a loving son and give me a key so I can move in. My lover would not like that. It said that in every relationship... There comes a time when the guy must choose between the person he loves and his mother. If a guy chooses his mother, 
he's crippled the relationship with his boyfriend. If he chooses his boyfriend, his mother becomes jealous and possessive, often causing problems because she can't let go of her baby boy. Rarely do they get along. Worse, if I sided with my mom and let her move in, I'll be taking a chainsaw to my own independence, my dreams, and my life. I would become mom's servant, just like dad had been before he died. This was going to be hard, but I had to do it. For Theodore's sake, for my sake. Mom, stop trying to interfere in my relationships. Sell the house, find an apartment, and get a job, just like the rest of us. Would you listen to me for a moment? I have something I need to tell you. Mom gave me her sternest look and said, How dare you be so mean to me? I'm moving in and you can't stop me. Give me the key. I'm your mother. No, you can't live here. Why do I try to tell you anything? You never listen, I said. Mom suddenly stood, her hands on her hips. Yaduvir Trusik, you used to do what I asked you. You used to listen to your mother. You used to love me. Your boyfriend has turned you against me. Mom, don't be like that. Theodore and I are, I tried to say. Then let me move in so you can take care of me. Mom said. Seriously, you want to leech off me? Grow up, Mom. I don't want you to move in, so the answer is no. I'm not your baby boy, and I won't take care of you. At least I won't have to see you for the next week, or even talk to you, I said. What do you mean? Mom shrieked. I'm leaving with Theodore, and I'm turning off my phone, I tried to say. But, honey, what if I need to call you? Mom said. I rolled my eyes and yelled, Call my brothers. Their wives hate me. I took a deep breath to keep from saying something I might regret and said, It's time you understood that I have my own life and it doesn't include you. My phone rang. Theodore. I could let Gandalf take the call, but I wanted some privacy and a little peace before I exploded. I stepped into the kitchen and used my cell. Theodore's voice was calm, and I focused on that. He said, I'm not going to the other side of Vegas. Ask your mom if spaghetti with sausage marinara and garlic bread is okay. I'll ask, I said, and peeked into the living room, just in time to see mom walking out the door. Tonight was the weirdest night. Mom just left, I said. Did you get a chance to tell her? Theodore asked. I shook my head at the same time as I said, No. Like usual, I couldn't get a word in. Theodore returned about thirty minutes later, tossing his wallet and keys next to mine on the tiny shelf by the door, and while we ate, Frodo climbed off the fridge and ate the smelly food waiting for him. We went to the bar and grill on 7th for a couple of hours, and then returned home for a long, hot shower. We had gone into the bedroom, dimmed the lights, turned on some music to set the mood, poured the wine was making out and taking off each other's clothes when ding dong 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 Frodo charged out of the room he's probably running for the fridge again Gandalf in his infuriatingly calm voice said Mrs. Adele Trusick is at the door oh god what time is it I asked Gandalf replied 1033 I don't get angry I meditate every morning. I work out to relieve stress. And Theo and I have long talks where we can vent about whatever bothers us. I don't get angry. Mom invading mine and Theo's space made me angry. Doesn't she realize I've grown up? That Theo is my love? That I moved out years ago? Won't she ever let me cut the umbilical cord and leave me alone? I took a breath to steady myself, faced Theo and said, Turn the shower on while I deal with this. I'll only be a minute. Hurry, lover. The water's running, he whispered, nibbling on my ear. While I watched, he played stripper with the last of his clothes. I pulled my pants back on. I had better hurry. In seconds, I was at the front door and flung it open. I didn't bother turning on the lights. I yelled, why won't you leave me alone? Mom wasn't even startled. She patted me on the cheek and steamrolled inside. Because you're my son, 
about earlier, I needed to go for a walk so you could clear your head and remember that you love me. You didn't mean any of the things you said. I came back so you could give me a hug and say you're sorry. Now get me a glass of wine and go put some clothes on. Damn it, Mom, just leave, I yelled. Don't swear. Get me something to drink. Maybe we can talk a little. Since Theodore is not around, we can have a real conversation. Theodore's changing you, my sweet boy, and I don't like it. He's taking you away from me. Mom gave me a headache. I said, My life is none of your business. Theo is waiting for me in the shower, and I don't want to talk to you. Gandalf, play some industrial metal punk. Maximum volume to help my mother leave. In the shower? You mean you and him? You're having private time in the shower? No, not my dear, sweet, innocent boy. Honey, be a dear and get me something to drink because we need to talk right now. If you love me, you'll leave Theodore. He's rude and lazy and he's not good for you. Things will change when I move in, Mom said and folded her arms. She seemed to want to say something else, but Gandalf interrupted. A selection by local band, Thirteen Hells, titled, My Spleen Bleeds for You, maximum volume as requested. Whatever it was, it wasn't music. Sounded more like chainsaws fighting with a chain-link fence with somebody screaming about internal organs. Thank God it was loud. It ripped through the hidden speakers like a hand grenade. It was so loud my ears could bleed any second. I went back to the kitchen poured some wine in a glass and took it back to Mom. I shouted, Keep the glass. Mom said something, but I couldn't hear her. I opened the door and gestured for Mom to exit. She left. I locked the door. She sent me a text the size of a novel. My sweet boy would never be so rude to his. I didn't read the rest and put my phone on silent. Finally, some peace. This could become my new favorite song. I needed a hot shower and a hotter massage. I shut the music off before the neighbors complained. While the hot water sprayed us, I leaned against the wall and let Theo's fingers ripple through my muscles. The next morning. We worked hard and had an intense three days, and with lots of help from my brothers, Kristoff and Stefan, and their wives, we had loaded our clothes in our cars, left stacks of boxes in the bedroom, as well as the furniture. As we walked out, Theo turned off the condo's alarm so the movers could get in. I packed Frodo in his green, top-load cat kennel. Theo packed all the components for Gandalf in a special box, and Theo, Kristoff, Stefan, and me drove the three cars and one truck for San Francisco. Their wives stayed behind. Kristoff's wife was 30 weeks pregnant and didn't want to travel. We gifted them a spa weekend with babysitters. Kristoff's wife especially loved the foot massage. Sunday afternoon, my brothers flew back to Vegas to be with their families. What's so special about San Francisco? It's our fifth time in San Francisco, though Theodore usually called it the city. It's completely different from Vegas. The first thing that gets me is the tang of the sea air. There's something about it that makes the place a little bit magic. We stayed in the Monarch Imperial Honeymoon Suite, and Theo was right. The view of the bay was amazing. Theodore always planned ahead. He proposed, and I accepted six months ago. Besides the ocean air and the amazing views, we needed the time for a little bit of pre-honeymoon bliss. I tried calling my mom to once again let her know about what was about to happen. But she never picked up. Finally, I sent her a text Call me. It's important. Her response, I have a surprise for my baby boy. You'll love it. I showed Theo the texts, and he shrugged, kissed me, and whispered, Since we have some quiet time, do you want to check out the shower? I heard it's big. The following Wednesday, we arrived just before sunset at a small chapel, the Summer Oak Chapel, that overlooked the bay. The view of the water and the ships and the Golden Gate Bridge at sunset, took my breath away. I held Frodo, as Theo held me. We stood looking at the scene, at the chapel, at the sky. Happy. Theo's parents were waiting for us, and a couple of our friends had flown from Vegas. 
Theo's mom kept dabbing her eyes and every two minutes she hugged me. You promise me you'll take good care of Theo. When he gets working, he forgets to eat. I hugged her back and said, I know, good thing we have Frodo to take care of both of us. We kept the service small and intimate and magical. I've never been this happy in my life. We both wore flowing white shirts and white slacks and repeated our vows while holding hands. Our rings were matching bands of white gold with the date of our marriage engraved inside. Our kiss was with smiles and tears and somebody threw white rose petals on us. We toasted with an ice wine imported from Canada and we streamed our ceremony to my brothers and their families and our friends back in Vegas. A destination wedding for the cheap. Christoph posted the video on YouTube and within an hour we had received dozens of texts congratulating us. Instead of a reception, we took Theo's parents and our visiting friends out to Neo Tuscany, a high-end restaurant with its own vineyard and organic garden and live peacocks strutting about the grounds. Theo's mom made a toast. To Yad, thank you for joining our family. We drank, but her toast made me sad. I missed my dad, and I wished mom had been more loving. I don't know what's wrong with her, but lately she has been smothering me. I've been working up the courage to tell mom to knock it off, because lately, whenever I'm around her, I get angry. Mom pushes her way, constantly. Now she wants to move in with us? Ever since I've met Theo, it's been, Yad, come over and let's eat something. Then mom makes me cook, and Theodore is not invited. Or, Yad, let's go to a restaurant. Mom makes me pay and Theodore is not invited. Or if he shows up, Mom throws a tantrum. Or, Yad, take me shopping. I need some new shoes. Once again, I usually have to pay, and Theodore is not invited. Once, when he did come, Mom pouted and muttered obscene things under her breath. And Mom said, this is only for family, and you're not family. And she was swearing. Theo is my family. I said. Mom blew up my phone for days. Is it wrong to resent your mom? Is it wrong to want some time alone with the man you love? Our wedding night. Well, let's just say we drank a little too much, stayed up a little too late, had a nice private party, just the two of us, in a bed lined with red silk sheets. And when we finally fell asleep, we didn't sleep much. We were awakened by Theo's phone. It was closest to me, so I scrambled for it and handed it to my lover. Oh my God, it's seven in the morning. It was a normal ring, which meant it was a number we didn't know. Hello, Theo said, putting the phone on speaker. Theodore Athens, some guy said. Yes, who is this? Theo asked. This is Carl of Acme Moving. We have you scheduled for this morning for a long distance move to San Francisco, Carl said. That's correct. Pick up the furniture in the boxes and deliver them to our storage unit. I think we were told it would take three days, four days, Theo said. Depending on traffic, can you confirm the address, Carl said. Theo went to a file folder and pulled out a piece of paper. The storage unit is in Oakland, California, near my parents' place, and the address is, and he told him the address. I've already got that. What's the pickup address here in Vegas? Carl said. I told him and asked, We left your company a key. Did we forget to turn the security system off so you can't get in? The code is 1221. I guess we were too busy packing. Sorry. No, sir. We have the code. The problem is somebody's living there. They have pictures on the walls and it's decorated with a lot of furniture and knickknacks and dozens of family pictures. When we went inside, she started screaming at us and threatened to call the police. We were only contracted for a bed, a desk, a couch, a love seat, the fridge, the stove, a hardwood dining room table and six chairs, two sets of drawers, some shelves, a recliner, and a couple of lamps, and some boxes. There's five times that much stuff in there now. I looked at Theo and he looked at me. He finally said, that doesn't make sense. The new owners weren't moving in until next month. That's two weeks. They're moving from Colorado and wanted to paint the place first. Maybe they came early to take measurements. Let me call the realtor, I said. 
Because I was early, I got a hold of the realtor first try. She confirmed. The new owners were still in Colorado. I told Theo and Carl that. In the background, Carl rang the doorbell to our old place. The door creaked open. I told you to leave, a woman said. Ma'am, I'm in contact with the owners and they reaffirmed their orders. I'm to pick up the furniture and boxes and deliver them. Please let us do our job, Carl said. You will not come into my house, the woman yelled. I recognized the voice. By the look on Theo's face, so did he. Mom, I shouted, what are you doing there? I'm turning this dump into a home. Like I told you, I'm moving in and you can't stop me, she said. How did you get a key? I said. Because you wouldn't give me a key. I had to take it off your key ring the other night and make a copy, Mom said. Mom, you need to, I started to say. Mom overspoke me. You need to listen to me. Theodore is a bad match for you. I refuse to let him live with us. Mom, would you shut up and listen to... I started to say. You need me to live with you. You need me to take care of you. I will cook and clean and do laundry, but you will never kick me out. I will take care of you, Mom screamed. Mom, you can't... I started to say. I am going to live here with you. You will take care of me because I don't have the money. And your boyfriend, how can you think he will treat you right? He needs to go, Mom said. I had to shout to be heard. Shut up, Mom. It's time you listen. You will not talk to me like that, Mom screamed. I've been trying to tell you that we got married, but you wouldn't stop talking. You're married? I won't allow it. Get a divorce and then get back here. Why are these people at my new house? Mom said. I ignored her questions and said, We sold the condo and have moved away. But I've moved in. You wouldn't make your mother move out, not after all the trouble I've gone through to make this place nice. You two have no decorating sense, so I had to do everything. You'll be surprised. You'll love it, Mom said. Theo took a seat beside me and held my hand. I squeezed his. I'm sorry, Mom. I know it's a hard time, and you have trouble accepting the reality. Dad's died, your children have started their own lives, and have families of their own. Where Theo and I are going, you can't come. Mom inhaled, ready to yell. Why not? Your older brothers need to take care of their mother, and their wives won't allow it. They don't like me. They hate me. You need to take care of me. My husband and I won't be taking care of you. You need to take care of yourself. Move back home until you can sell the place and find a job, I said. I already sold it and spent the money, so you have to come back and take care of me, she whined. That's not going to happen. Theo will be working as a consultant for a military contractor on improving their drone control systems, as well as civilian applications for first responders. I've transferred to my company's branch here as well. If all goes well, the Gandalf AI protocols will go commercial, and we're in negotiation with a big tech company. We'll live here in San Francisco for six months, then it's off to Honolulu for drone field testing for the next six months, and then we'll be in Okinawa for additional testing with the Thwaite Corporation. Then it's back to San Francisco for additional product development. Except for the occasional visit, we won't return to Vegas for a long time. Mom was finally silent. Theodore and I are sorry, but we can't help you, Mom, I said. Mom took a deeper breath. I gave birth to you, raised you, and this is how you repay me? How can I have raised such selfish, rude children? I'm your mother. It's time for you to take care of me like I took care of you. Cut the attitude and grow up, Mom, and stop being a mooch. Treat your family nicer. Maybe then we'll want to come back and see you. Maybe Kristoff and Stefan's wives will begin to like you. For now, our movers have a job to do, and you need to move out before the new owners call the police. Now, if you'll excuse us, we're on our honeymoon. Honeymoon? How dare you? You never told, she began to say. Guess who never gave me the chance, I said. Goodbye. Development and testing took longer than expected. We spent almost a year in San Francisco before moving to Honolulu. Okinawa was a dream. With the help of the tech advisors from the Thwaite Corporation, 
we took Gandalf to an all-new level. We learned later that Mom forced herself into Kristoff's family, and Kristoff unleashed his not-so-secret weapon, his wife. She must have been a fire demon in her previous life because she doesn't let Mom get away with anything. Mom can't be a parasite laying around all day. Mom had to do chores, had to get a job, had to help take care of the kids, and pay one-third of the bills. And be respectful. Either that or Mom is kicked out. We went back to Vegas last New Year's. We went out to dinner as a family. And best yet, everybody had to pay their own way even mom. While we were eating, a news report came across Stefan's phone about a forest fire in Northern California. Stefan chuckled and read it out loud. We're seeing a new age of technology, thanks to an experimental device designed by One.com. A drone located three missing people, used fire foam to create a path through the flames, and then led them to safety. Theodore Athens, the owner and developer of One.com, was unavailable for comment but a spokesman for One.com said that it is their goal to help first responders help more people. Kristoff smiled at us and said, Hey, Mom, isn't that Theo's company? You must be proud. Mom muttered, I wouldn't know. Stefan lifted his glass in a toast and said, To the smartest brother-in-law on the planet. That's why I fell in love with him, I said, and toasted my husband. The End Thank you. I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you Wednesday. Peace.